this is Bianca Lopez, and this is BNNL all the way from Vegas. A partnership with OWI and Tail, we're in Vegas doing interviews, finding out what's the latest and greatest in identity. So stay tuned and be in the know. I'm in Vegas with another amazing woman in identity, Catherine Noel. Catherine, welcome to the show. Bianca, thanks very much. It's I exciting know. to be here. I know, it's exciting to see you in person. Mm -hmm. our, our like crazy schedules wouldn't let us do this over Skype, but is now we get to do this in person. Yeah. Tell me about Sphere. Everybody's walking around with a Sphere identity lanyard here at OWI, and you are doing some pretty big news announcements. We are. Um, it's great to be here. This yeah. is um, my third year here at No, and every so you've committed year, since the beginning, yeah, pretty much. Every year it gets better. So I know. I'm looking forward to learning lots of things. But I'm here with my team, and we're about to launch our product. So yeah, that's a big it's deal. Very exciting. I know. Mm -hmm. How how long have you been working on this? For about 18 months, we build things using blockchain technology, and that okay. takes a while. That's not yeah. straightforward. But to get it to be in um, high availability, high speed security, high volume of transactions, yes, yes. it does. Yes. So but tell me about what is that you're launching, or give me a little bit of a sneak peek. Sure. So we're launching our business product, and okay. the purpose of that is to enable customers to onboard themselves on websites without doing any typing. So we are so. How does that work? There's a bit of magic in there, but okay. we are so sick of online forms and yep, I know, can relate. traditional ways of signing up, which make no sense given what technology can do. Mm -hmm. So we and most people just give up and do basic SSOs like log in with Facebook, log in yes. with, without understanding what they're giving away. Yeah, that's of their identity. That's really not private, and mm -hmm. we've learned that. So what over the breaches over the years. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So we build self-sovereign identity technology, which means that it's highly secure, that we're just the software provider and we can't even see the data. Okay, so, so you're building a true, I've been talking about this and I said to somebody, once I sold my last business, I said if I could build anything, I'd build a data stock exchange. Because to me, it's just like money. It's gonna be an instrument that's gonna be regulated, but there is some tra transparency that needs to be in the system, but also a black box system. I yes. shouldn't have to give everything away to you yep, to get absolutely. something in return that doesn't make sense. So mm -hmm. is that what you're building? You're building, you're using cryptography to build something that consumers and businesses don't need to devouch their data? Like where yep. does that data sit? Yeah, that data sits in distributed storage around the world. Based um, on whatever. Encrypted. So if it's in India, we'll sit in India given their privacy laws. Uh, no, because we use international okay. technology. So for countries with laws that say it must be stored here, then mm -hmm. we can't do that. But of the 196 countries in the world, there Not are... Not all of them say no, that. No, exactly. Yes, exactly. I just happen yep. to be in a few ones that have that policy. Yes. <laughs> but the average consumer, so if I'm... So what is the implementation? Like, what? Um, who, is, who is the target user of the product that you're launching? So people that use e-commerce sites to sign up for things. It's a very okay. broad target market. So it's like, it's going to be dummy proof as I say it, yes. like my mom will be able to understand, here's what it means and here's why I care about privacy and here's the way you do it. Yes, absolutely. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So tell me some more about what, what, el what else is a sphere for those out there that don't know what sphere identity is and how long you guys been in the business and what made you get into this business is always the question I'm dying to hear. Okay. So as a business, we um, we started 18 months ago. Yeah. Um, and I've got a team of 40 that are in Singapore and in Auckland, which is where the okay. project started. Um, we're very development-led, so we have a really strong development Scientific team in background. Auckland. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's great to work with such smart people. I know. And I got into this business because I got sick of things not working easily. Okay. Um, so it was like a personal passion. What did you used to do? What did, what did you do your school in, Catherine? Let's go back in time and tell back. me. Um, I originally studied urban planning, but I've got postgraduate qualifications in IT and business. Wow, so you went from mm -hmm. urban planning to IT and business yes. to now an identity. Yeah. That is amazing. Exactly. And my focus throughout my career has been on international business and why is that so difficult? And so I've yeah. constantly looked for ways of that being easier. And what we're doing is making it easy for businesses anywhere to get international customers. And identity is written all over it. So yes. 18 months ago, you said enough, I'm doing it. Yes. I'm changing it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I hope I can support you in that path forward because honestly, 
it, from even the diversity of how technology products are built. I think having teams that are in such different geographies is probably mm -hmm. bringing you a lot of different data sets yes. and a lot of different ways of looking at the identity Absolutely. problem, yes. which to me are so intertwined with like, if it's not interoperable and it's not an infrastructure, it's probably not going to be a good solution long term. Absolutely. Um, Catherine, you're doing a masterclass, so what can people expect from your masterclass? You're going to walk them through some of the principles that you guys use on the blockchain infrastructure? Yeah, the masterclass isn't on blockchain, it's okay. on privacy. and what On privacy, and my favorite topic, <laughs> data privacy, yep. Exactly, and we'll be talking about consent receipts, which Okay. The general public are really boring, but really yes, important when very it comes boring. to so to, to, so, so what is a consent GDPR? receipt for the person that needs to learn it in like two seconds? A consent receipt is a receipt that you get that shows the data that you've agreed to exchange. That's all. And they don't do that. They do massive terms and agreements, fluster it around, and people just go yes. Yep. And they have no idea what they yep. give to. So this is you changing or explaining how this should change? Yes, and also in particular explaining how it should change when there aren't just two parties. Our data isn't often just with two parties. No, so it's we a multi-party party. party. Multi -party mm -hmm. Consent receipts. Amazing. Tell me about, so you've seen OWI grow through the years. Yes. What are you expecting from this year? You're launching your big product here. What, what, what if somebody that's not here, hasn't come yet, could look for? How would you describe uh, it? I think this is the best place to find out everything that's going on in the identity industry. Yeah. So we believe in pushing boundaries, but there are lots of other people here doing exactly the same. And this is where you find out This is your true exactly test of how you're happening. really innovating. Yeah, Okay. Exactly. That is amazing. So if you're looking to figure it out, what is innovative, and you want to catch up with Catherine and all the disruptors in identity, be in the know, and we'll see you next time.